Welcome to Epworth United Methodist Church. I'm lay leader Donna Kellum. I have a few announcements to make. Um, first of all, we will have a Meals for the Hungry Zoom meeting on Wednesday, August 12th at 7 o'clock. Mekong will send out a link to all the team captains so we can start a plan to get that program going again. Also, today, between 11 and 1, uh, please come and receive a prepackaged communion kit at the church parking lot nearest Akahonic Elementary. Maxine Ashby and Pastor Mekong will serve um, anyone who arrives. Please join me now in our opening prayer. Almighty God, you give us the joy celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life in your service and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Our opening hymn is, I Come With Joy. to meet my Lord forgiven, loved, and free in awe and wonder to recall His life laid down for me His life laid down for me I come with Christians far and near to find as all I've read the new community of love in Christ's communion bread in Christ's communion Christ makes bread and bids us share each proud division ends. The love that made us makes us one, and strangers now are friends, and strangers now are friends. And thus with joy we meet our Lord, His presence always near, is in such friendship better known we see. Together met, together bound, we'll go our different ways. And as his people in the world, we'll live and speak his praise. We'll live and speak his praise. Jesus said, only little children can show us the kingdom of heaven. So this is time for all God's children. Parents, please make sure you are with your children right now. Hello friends, today as usual, we're going to start with Hello Jesus. So I invite you to close your eyes. And in silence, think about a dream. Maybe a dream you dreamed yesterday, or a dream that you dream for your life. Is this dream from God? Open your eyes. Can you say hello, Jesus? Hello, Jesus. <laughs> so, friends, can you see my stall? Yes, stall is, you know, this is the meaning of my ordination. Ordination means God allowed Mikang to become pastor to serve you and to serve God. And can you see my beautiful color stall? One of my very good friends, she made this for me when I officially be ordained. <laughs> so I brought this stall because in the Bible, the person we are going to meet, he had a beautiful coat. The Bible said he had a beautiful robe like me, but it had a beautiful color of many, many colors. His name is Joseph. And Joseph was God, his father's favorite son. His father Jacob had many sons. Can you guess how many? You think one, two, five? 
No, it was twelve sons, and Joseph was on was the eleventh son. But Joseph was Jacob's favorite. So his father Jacob bought this beautiful coat of many color because Jacob loved Joseph so much. Also, Joseph was very special to God because Joseph dreamed for God. Today in the Bible, he dreamed a special dream from God. In the dream, he was making bunch of wheat in the harvest time, and there were twelve bunches because he was making these bunches with his brothers. But only his bunch stood up, and rest of the brothers' bunch they bowed down to Joseph's bunch. Although he had another dream, in the dream he saw the sun and the moon and eleven stars were bowing down to Joseph. Today's scripture reading is Genesis chapter thirty-seven, verses five through eleven. Joseph's dreams of greatness. Once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, "Listen to this dream that I have dreamed. There we were binding sheaves in the field." Suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. He had another dream and he told it to his brother saying, Look, I had another dream. The sun, the moon, and the eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his dad, his father, and his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What kind of dream is, it, is this that you have had? Shall we indeed come, I and your mother and your brothers, and bow to the ground before you? So his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Would you pray with me? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, you are here with us and move among us and in us and within us so that we can dream in you. Open our eyes, our ears, and our souls so that we can see what you see in our life and we can dream with you. Let the words of our mouth and meditations of our heart be acceptable to you and in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. So we're gonna talk about broken dreams today. <laughs> The sermon title is Broken Dream. Also, some of us might be feeling like a lot of our dreams are broken nowadays. You now, think about a dream of going back to school every day in person, and dream of having secure jobs because many of our friends lost their job. How about dream of listening peaceful news from media every day, every night? How about a dream of going to Food Lion without face mask? <laughs> a dream of having family gatherings or a friend gathering, not thinking of the social distances. Yeah. How about a dream of coming to church and hugging each other. Yeah, just like the old days. <laughs> we read Genesis chapter 37, which is the first part of Joseph's story. And it is all about broken dreams. And we can understand about how Joseph would feel in the text. Joseph was only 17 years old boy. But he was his father's favorite, as we 
you know, share with the children. And you may remember from your Sunday school classroom, no one had the beautiful you know, robe of many colors, just like Joseph had. You know, that was from his father. So Joseph, I think, he would dream to be his father's favorite son forever and maybe inherit his father's possession someday. That would be his dream and his expectation. But then one day, all of Joseph's great dreams fell apart because of these two strange dreams he dreamed one night. Do you remember <laughs> the dreams? The first was of harvest time, only his sheep stood, and other sheep bowed down to it. Another dream was the moon and the sun and the 11 stars, and they were bowing down to Joseph. It's a weird, weird dream. And it seemed like this young Joseph never knew what was coming to his life because of these dreams. He just bragged about his dreams to his brothers and his father. And then all things were crashed. His father rebuked him, although he loved Joseph so much. Even his 11 brothers were furious with Joseph. And that was not the end. Life was going to the way that Joseph never, never dreamed. How could he know that his brothers, his brothers would put him in a pit and almost kill him? How could he know that his beautiful robe would be stripped? How could he know that even he would be sold as a slave by his brothers? Life turned out so difficult and different. Indeed, it seemed like Joseph's dreams were broken. And we see that too. Everything looks broken in Genesis chapter 37. On our side, we see the broken family, broken relationships, and broken dreams. However, on God's side, the story was different. They were not broken dreams because God even had a plan to use this broken family, broken relationships, and broken dreams to save the life of Israelites. Yes, the dream that Joseph had, it was not his own dream. It was from God. God revealed the plan for the future to save Joseph's life and the life of his family and the nation. And the brother who never dreamed for God, even who didn't care for God, they committed horrible sins. They, they were jealous of Joseph. They almost killed him and they sold Joseph as a slave. However, God even used these brokenness to bless Joseph and to save his brother's life in the future. And that's what we will explore next Sunday. But today, it is very interesting for us because God is speaking to us about God's dream for you and me. Think about Joseph, although he became slave and his journey next week, it was not easy. However, Joseph was always blessed. With God's dream, God's spirit was with Joseph, and God's words always directed Joseph. So whenever we read Joseph's story, we hear Joseph was successful, and prosper wherever he went. My brothers and sisters in Christ, just like I started this sermon, we might be feeling like a lot of our dreams are broken today. 
Where do you see the brokenness in your life? I see the brokenness of life, brokenness of relationships, communities, and the nations, and the world. Because we see the brokenness, because we are wounded by this brokenness, God gave us the good news today. With God's dream, they are not broken. With God's dream, they are in God's plan for our future. So beyond the evil we see today, God is speaking to us because God is actively working in our lives and fulfilling God's dream through God's people. So this is the question that God gave you and me. Have you thought about God's dream for you? What is God's dream for you today? Today, one of our dreams come true because we gather together around this Lord's table. But it seems to be broken too because this is not the way that we used to do. However, beyond what we see, God is actively working to fulfill God's will through you and me and through at birth and through the people of Christ. So today, God's dream perfectly has come true. So today after worship, I mean after watching this worship, you know, when you drive to come to this table, maybe have a time to ask God about God's dream for you. When you receive the bread and the cup, the small cup, you, know, you will receive this. But as you receive that, ask Jesus, what, Jesus, what is your dream? As you give me your body and your life to me. And when you drive back home, maybe you can ask the Holy Spirit, to bless you as God's dreamer. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, people of God said, Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, indeed you called us to dream for you and you prepared for this table to dream with you. However, Lord, we admit that we are easily blinded like Joseph's brothers. We didn't see and we don't see what you want us to see and we don't hear what you want us to hear. We use our lips and our bodies to hurt others' heart or to make harmful energy for others. O oh Lord, forgive us and clothe us with your forgiving love and help us dream in you and with you. We also lift up all the people in our hearts, our friends, our families, our community workers, and everyone who need your dream of healing, dream of reconciliation, and dream of love. We especially pray for our dear sister, Sally Beth Worth, as she is in the midst of darkest valley. Lord, let her feel your presence so that she may not be afraid and find peace in you. Give her your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Christ died while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward you and me. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. This is the time to offer ourselves with our offerings. Gracious and loving God, we come to your table with the grateful heart of all of the blessings from you. Please remember all of our givers and their gift, the gift of their talent, their time, and their life, as the gift of music, the gift of prayer and worship. Remember them and bless them, use them for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So find the words for great thanksgiving on the screen. Uh, I will read the regular letters and I invite you to read the, the bold letters. Okay, are we ready? Yes. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing to always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. With your dream, you created us and shared your breath of life and loved us. 
When you turn away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast and helps us keep dreaming with you. By making the covenant to be our God and by speaking to us through many, many prophets, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in on ending him. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him so that he can dream with us. A dream of preaching the good news to the spiritually and physically poor. And dream of healing and feeding. And a dream of reconciliation. And a dream of freedom. And a dream of liberation. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and saying, Drink this from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of your mighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in a praise and thanksgiving and as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on the people who are joining through Facebook, YouTube, and radio, and pour out your Holy Spirit on the people who are having special journey from this, from this world and to the heaven, and pour out your Holy Spirit for their families, and pour out your Holy Spirit on this gift of bread and the cup, and make them before us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry of all over the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet in our heavenly home. So Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, God Almighty, and people of God said, Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me as our Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Body of Christ, bring us God's dream for us and for this world. Blood of Christ, to renew our soul and our body and our life as God's dreamer. 
So now table is ready and all are welcome in this table. This is Jesus' table as Jesus prepares for everybody. Those who are thirsty and hungry in Jesus' love, please come and receive this gift from Jesus. Everybody will receive this prepackaged communion. As you open this part, you will find the wiper, and you can have that. And then this part, you will have the grape juice. Easy direction. Am I right? <laughs> and if Ms. Maxine Ashby and I will serve you in our church parking lot between 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Come anytime when you are ready. With this invitation, please receive the benediction. People of at birth, people of Christ, go in God's grace. At this table of the Lord, find God's dream for you and be God's dreamer. In the name of the Creator and Redeemer and Sanctifier, people of God said, Amen. Amen.